Okay, so today I'm going to be reviewing two books, Into the Abyss, which is a nonfiction about a uh, plane crash and their survival, as well as the lives after for the for the survivors for survivors and uh, Morning Star, which is a adult sci-fi book, specifically the third book in the Red Rising trilogy. I'm going to be spoiler free for the nonfiction, and then I'll have a spoiler free section as well as a spoiler sec spoiler section for the sci-fi. So links in the description, not links. Well, yeah, there will be links in the description. Also timestamps in the description if you want to skip around. We're going to start off with Into the Abyss. Into the Abyss is a true story about a airplane crash that happened. Uh, it chronicles the people who survived and how they made it through as well as their rescue and what comes after, which I kind of just said. It was excellent. <laughs> It was, okay, so the author of this book is the daughter of one of the survivors. So we know from the start of the book that some people survive and even some of who survives because she talks about it at the very beginning. But the, the book isn't a suspense of who's going to make it as much as it is just a story of how they made it and what else. Not everybody in this book is painted as rosy and... I really appreciated that she did that. She gave a really honest depiction of these people's flaws, the mistakes they made, and the pain that they experienced through it, mostly internally. But yes, they had physical pains as well. She interviewed each of the survivors and got very detailed accountings of what they went through and what they experienced. And we get a very close look of the impact of everything. The story of their survival was a fantastic story. It was very well told and and I I loved hearing about what they went through and how they came together to make it through. Then whenever they're rescued, um I was the those that did survive, which I won't say who did, but there are survivors. When they're rescued, um there were several hours left in this book and I didn't know what I'm supposed to do with that because it's like the story's over, but I'm so glad that she ended up giving us a detailed account of the rest of their lives as well uh, because it wasn't peachy keen when they went home. Uh, they, they all went through a lot afterwards. Uh, we got to see the, the struggles and the battles that they faced recovering. We got to see what they fought for, what they dedicated their lives to after this crash and how this crash um, really directed the choices that a lot of them would make. It, it refocused their lives in a lot of ways. And we also got to see their long-standing friendships, how much they meant to each other after this and, and how deeply they cared for one another and, and continued to be there for each other, even if they weren't in each other's lives daily. Anytime they came back together, the earth stopped for that because there was there was a bond that created between them that w was so valuable to them. It was a group of people that had this not happened to them, they never would have had that bond. They never would have made that connection, but the connection was so important to them afterwards and I loved it. I think my one biggest complaint about this book, the one thing that, that um, I don't know, complained that I want to complain about <laughs> is is that is the audiobook. I listened to this on Audible. I think it's an Audible original. I'm not sure if you can get it physically. Let me find out for you real quick. Yep, you can. You can get it physically. I got it on Audible and um, the author narrated it as well, which I totally understand why she wanted to do. This is a very personal story to her and I understand why she wanted to be the voice to it, but it wasn't my favorite performance. It to me, it felt like she was reading the story instead of telling the story, if that makes sense. That said, I happen to be very picky <laughs> with my narrators. Um, and if you're not picky, you probably won't feel the same way. I talked to my dad about it, who also read this book, also listened to the audiobook, and said that he didn't have any issue with the narrator. Yeah, she wasn't great, but he was fine. Um, so if you're not picky, then you probably won't care. I am. So... I didn't love the narration, but I still listened to the whole audiobook. I still loved it. I still thought it was a fantastic and very interesting true story. 
so I highly recommend it. Link in the description if you want to check it out. Next we have Morning Star, which is the third book in the Red Rising trilogy, the original trilogy, the first trilogy. Um, spoiler free first and then we'll dive into some brief spoilers talking about some of my favorite scenes and some of the scenes that they didn't like. Um, spoiler free, I enjoyed it a lot. Now that I've completed the whole trilogy, speaking of the trilogy as a whole, I it's a roller coaster of a series. This third book is much, much darker. I mean, each book has has gotten darker. What's funny, looking back now, one of my biggest complaints with book one was that the author was taking very heavy themes and, and situations and I felt like he was not handling them well at all. I, it felt tactless to me. But as I've read through this series, I am starting to feel like it's not so much that as it was more of a there's been a building of skill here because he's still taking really dark stuff and describing it. But now I feel like this stuff is much more borderline grimdark, like very disturbing stuff, but it's being written more skillfully. Whereas back then I think he was trying to do the same thing. It's just that the skill maybe wasn't fully there yet. Anyway, this book is so, there are, there are scenes that are very disturbing and he wrote them so well. Uh, the series is just getting darker and darker as we go on. And um, also the characters I'm feeling are, I'm feeling much, much more attached to as I've progressed through the trilogy. It's a roller coaster ride. I mean, it's still just as book one was. It's twist after twist after twist after twist. Uh, Pierce Brown doesn't really let you breathe. He's just like, anytime you're calming down from, from some big event, he's like, here comes the next one. <laughs> and, and it's a ride. And it's something that has me on my toes the whole time. It's something that has me on the edge of my seat the whole time. Uh, sometimes I love the twists. Sometimes I think they're fantastic. Sometimes I'm underwhelmed by them. Um, this series is loved so hard on booktube. I mean, so hard. <laughs> and um, I definitely don't love it on the level that every other booktuber seems to love it on. I enjoyed it, especially books two and three. I didn't love book one. I didn't like book one, but I enjoyed books two and three. I would say book two is probably my favorite in the trilogy. I still enjoyed book three as well, uh, but I would say that book two is, is my favorite. In general, I don't love this series on the level that everybody else seems to. I thought it was good. I enjoyed it. It was quite the roller coaster ride. It's not the series fully for me, um, but I still did have a really good time reading it. I read it with a friend and I had a blast chatting with him about it and I had a generally good time. I'm gonna dive into spoilers really quickly uh, to talk about a couple of scenes that I loved and one scene that I didn't love um, and then we will go into final thoughts. So check the description if you wanna skip spoilers and just get to my final thoughts. Okay, my two favorite scenes of, of the book. <laughs> my two favorite scenes of the book are one, a scene that apparently only I love. <laughs> it's, that's, I'm being, I'm being ridiculous. Um, a, a scene that I really, really loved was when Darrow was uh, confronting, I think Thistle was her name. And when, when she said, I'm, when he asked her, like, how could you do this? And she, she said, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know it would be this bad. And he cuts her off and he says, yes, you did, don't lie. I understand why you would do this to me, but you did it to Severo too. Ooh. Ooh, I loved that scene. And it's funny, a buddy read this with my friend Dylan and then Michael was reading it at the same time as me, Michael Nip, another booktuber. I'll link him in the description. I won't link Dylan because he's not he doesn't have a channel, but I, I discussed it with Michael afterwards as well because he read it at the same time. And with Dylan, when I told him about the scene, how much I loved it, he was like, oh yeah, I guess that was a good scene. Huh, didn't even really think about it. But now that I think about it, yeah, it's great. And then when I was talking to Michael, it was not in his top scene list, but he agreed, yeah, it's a good scene. Listen, <laughs> I have not been attached to Darrow. I have not cared about him at all. He's not a character that I've been able to attach to, uh, partially because he's, you know, well, I mean, I've talked about it in my other reviews. I don't need to rehash all the reasons why he doesn't work for me, but he's not a, a, a character that's worked for me. But this scene, this is a scene that I was like, yeah, I can get on board with you. Like he just, I love that he just shut her down. He's not gonna be manipulated. He's not gonna be stepped on. He's not gonna be twisted around. Like 
no, he stands his ground and he's like, I'm not taking that. I'm not taking your excuses. Don't lie. You did it on purpose. You knew what you were getting into. You knew what you were getting us into, but why Severo? I just, mm, it was such a good scene. The other scene that I loved in this book was, of course, the scene when Severo did a back, a backflip off the stage to hang himself to prove a point. And I know, I know that hangings take like five, like 10 minutes in this. It doesn't matter when that scene happened, I nearly lost it because all logic flew out of my head and I'm instantly like, he hanged himself? Like, it got me, it really got me. And then of course, that chapter ends, you're not gonna, you're not gonna stop. You're gonna go into the next chapter and he's fine. They're gonna cut him down. Everything's gonna be fine. But the shock factor worked for me. I lost it. I mean, Severo, while he's a horrible person, I mean, he's terrible. He's like pro-torture. He's pro, um, he, he, he's cool with a lot of nasty stuff, which I mean, it's a really dark world. So everybody kind of is. He's not a, good guy, but he's so lovable. And especially in book three, I feel like he really, his personality really came out to play in book three. You know, I've liked him from book one, but in book three, I felt, I feel like he was almost a new person. You know, he, he just, he was so much more funny. He was so much more confrontational. He was so much, I don't know, there was just, it felt like he really got to shine in this book. And I, he's not good, <laughs> but I like him so much. And when he did that, <laughs> oh man, when he kicked Cassius off and then did a back, it was just brilliant. It was so good. I really did like the way this trilogy ended, the way this book and trilogy ended. Uh, I feel like there were there was enough tying up of loose ends that it felt complete and whole, but still enough loose threads that it I can see how he can continue to build off of this. And it was very satisfying. It was dark and brutal and graphic and terrible and exciting and thrilling and a roller coaster. It was all the things. But <laughs> the thing that I didn't like was Severo's fake out death. And it's not just because it was a fake out death. We had a fake out death for Cassius too, halfway through the book. And yeah, it's a trope that I don't love, but I hated the execution of it because Pierce Brown, you chose first person perspective. You decided to make Darrow narrate this book. You chose to get me this deep in his head. <sighs> so then we kill Severo. He's shot in the chest, like what, 12 times, something like that. And then we drag his dead body along with us. We're with his dead body for chapters and chapters. It went on for a long time. And, okay, the problem is that Darrow told us he was dead. Darrow held his dead body and screamed to the heavens. Darrow looks at him and calls him dead multiple times, more than one time. Darrow says the words, Severo is dead. So, the thing is, there's no reason for Darrow to lie to us. Darrow doesn't know we're over his shoulder. Darrow doesn't know that we're watching everything with him, that we're seeing, that we're following him in his head. He doesn't know we're there. There's no reason for him to lie to us. There's no reason for his thought life to be disingenuous. He, if he knows Severo is dead, there's no reason for him, or if he knows Severo's not dead, there's no reason for him to be saying he's dead. No one's in his head but him. Why? So here's the thing. I'm glad Severo's not dead. And him coming back to life. And I mean, technically his heart did stop beating. So I mean, technically he was dead, but Darrow still was in on the lie. And he intentionally withheld that from himself, which makes no sense. And I just, I just, to me, that's not a good twist because it's disingenuous. It's, okay, my favorite author of all time, whose books I praise to anyone who will listen to me, Frederick Bachman, he does this sometimes too. Not this thing specifically, but he does this type of thing too, where he'll say something to the reader to mislead the, lead the reader. And then later on, he'll have the big reveal and he's like, ha ha, you were fooled. And it's like, no, I wasn't fooled. I was lied to. <laughs> you, you were disingenuous. You made me believe something with your words. And then later you changed the thing and then acted like it was a twist, but that's not a twist. It, it's a lie. <laughs> and I hate it. I hate it so much. There's, 
To me, this wasn't, I didn't like it because it felt like a disingenuous twist. It wasn't, I was lied to and I don't like it. <laughs> but even with that rant, even with me really not liking that one twist in a book full of twists, I still, once Severo did come back to life, when Severo, you know, was resurrected, whatever you want to call it, and, um, and then they, oh my golly, that, that final battle, and then, oh my goodness, um, Mustang being the, the thing that ends up, or the one that ends up kind of bringing it all together, and that people follow, even though that's not the role she wants, um, I just, it, it was a good ending. It was a solid ending. I don't, I mean, I, I don't love the whole, I had a baby in secret, here's your baby, now we're together. There were hints of it and definitely I suspected that. So it's not, it's not like it came out of nowhere, but I don't know how I feel about that. But I guess that is something that we can build on in the next series. Final thoughts now that you've gotten some of my rantings and ravings of things that I loved and didn't love. Final thoughts. Um, I, in general, I think that it was a great book. I think it was very good. I enjoyed reading it. I felt on my toes the whole time. Uh, the series doesn't fully work for me, but it's a preference. You know, I don't, I like a more slow moving, a uh, story that takes its time to build things up. And uh, Pierce Brown, he he likes to ride a roller coaster. He likes to ride a crazy ride full of twists and turns, never know what's coming next. And I think that that's great. And I completely understand why this has such mass appeal. It's not my preference. And so because of that, I liked this series, but I didn't love it. I enjoyed reading it specifically because I was reading it with a friend and I really enjoyed discussing it with that friend. But uh, I don't know if I'll continue on to the, ne the next series or not. I may, I may not. I'll sit on it for a while and see how I feel. It's, it's one that I liked, but I didn't love on the level that everyone else seems to love. But I did have a fun time reading it and I'm glad I read it. I'd love to chat with you more about either of these books down in the comments. Have you read them? Are you going to read them? What are your thoughts? I post videos every Tuesday through Friday. I'll see you again soon.